Hello, and welcome to Markets in Focus. My name is Joe Bell, and today I'm going to walk you through some of the most interesting financial market themes that I'm observing. So let's get started. Obviously, interest rates have been rising significantly. Let's talk about why that's putting pressure on U.S. equities. Number two, yield curve inversion received a lot of headlines over the past couple of weeks. Let's unpack what that means for the stock market and economy historically. And then finally, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the short-term improvement in momentum that was followed by that really strong rally during March. Let's talk about the observations um, from that market rally and what we can take from that. All right, so if we look on the chart here, we have the percentage of S&P 500 stocks with dividend yields. Remember, that's the dividends paid divided by the stock price. So that's the dividend yield compared to the 10-year treasury yield. And of course, that's the yield on the U.S. treasury bond market, kind of that risk-free interest rate from the U.S. government debt. Now, in comparison, we can see currently 31% of S&P 500 stocks earn dividends greater than that yield. Now, if you compare that to back in uh, early 2020, we can see on average, uh, just north of 60%. So about cut in half here recently. And that's because of two things. Obviously, stock market prices have went up since that time, but also interest rates have went up dramatically. Now, why is this important? As an investor in the marketplace, and you're surveying the different asset classes, the higher that quote unquote risk-free US treasury bond becomes, the higher interest rate it's earning, um, the more uh, favorable it's going to become to choose that as an investment for that investor. So um, as we continue to see this go lower, if interest rates continue to move higher, that's going to put pressure on stocks, a variety of other reasons related to valuations. But just looking from the investor's perspective, that's the case right now, still above that long-term moving average of 20%, but something to keep an eye on in the months and years ahead. Now, yield, cur yield curve inversion. We've seen the yield curve flatten it briefly, inverted at certain points, during the last week of March of 2022. Now, what does this exactly mean? What it means inversion is basically the longer term maturity interest rate is actually lower than the short term. In this case, the 10 year versus the two year. Now that's not normal. And what it typically means is market participants are saying the Fed might be moving the short term rates a little too far, a little too fast, and maybe a little bit skeptical about whether the economy can handle it. And in the long term, interest rates might have to actually come down a little bit because we're not going to see the economic growth because rates are too high. Now, that's the story. And historically, it's the reason is because recessions do typically follow these yield curve inversions. But you want to check the math a little bit closer because the, the lag between yield curve inversion and recession since 90, 1988, it's been about 21 months. If you look at the stock market's performance from the first time the yield curve inverts to when it ultimately peaks, on average, that's about 17 months. And the S&P 500's gain during that uh, time frame is close to 29%. So yield curve inversion, not the most positive thing for the stock market and economy, but there's a pretty significant lag historically, not the greatest short-term timing tool. Now, speaking of short term, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about a chart here. The blue line on the bottom is the percentage of stocks on the New York Stock Exchange that are above their 10 week moving average. Now, 10 week moving average, it could have been a bunch of different numbers. That's basically just an intermediate term moving average, which says these are the percentage of stocks that are in intermediate term uptrends. And you can see during the months of February and March, uh, as the S&P 500 made a new low, we actually saw some improvement where more and more stocks were becoming in uptrend. So that was kind of a, an improvement underneath the surface that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Of course, that has been followed by a really strong market rally by the S&P 500. One of the encouraging things, not only because it's been accompanied by an improvement in the percentage of stocks that are above their 10-week moving average that you can see on the chart here, but we also saw widespread participation from small caps, mid caps, and large caps. And, and while Fed policy and the yield curve inversion and things like these longer term factors are a bit of a concern longer term, I think short term, these are some positive things technically to keep your eye on. And then finally, thank you for watching. Um, everybody's heard uh, enough hot takes about the, the slap from, from Will Smith to, to Chris Rock and how he insulted his wife, Jada Pinkett Smith. But I want to talk about something that's maybe not hitting as many headlines, something that was brought to my attention, pretty interesting example of life imitating art. Rewind 20 years ago, MTV VMA Awards. You had Sean Wayans, comedian, doing a stand-up bit where he was actually impersonating fellow comedian Chris Rock 
insulting all the different celebrities in the audience like they normally do. And uh, Puff Daddy, I think he's Sean Combs now, was P. Diddy at the time. Uh, Sean Combs went up and slapped him, but it was part of a skit, a bit where they had all the celebrities come on stage and, and pretend uh, slap and hit him for those insults. But fast forward 20 years, we have the real life version of this. Pretty funny connection 20 years later. With that, I want to thank everyone for watching, and I will see you next time.